Good morning, cubies and newbies. How are you doing? Uh, I am Sunshine. This is the AP Cube Method for Solving Rubik's Cubes. I'm the AP Cube Tutor. Uh, it works on every complexity Rubik's Cube this, the same way as it works on, no, not the same way, as, and it also works on every complexity minx. Formula A is 4 moves, Formula B is 8 moves, and with that you can solve, it's all you need to solve every complexity Rubik's Cube. Uh, algorithm, uh, parity algorithms are a thing of the past. So, to do, yeah. Uh, formula A is four moves. Formula B is eight moves. Formula A is used to bring a piece, an active p a piece, to the top layer, and the top face. Uh, formula B is move, used to move three pieces around, and you just orient the cube so that that's <laughs> so that that's what you want to do. You find the cube that's wrong, throw it in the direction it wants to be and you're done. There's a little bit more look ahead in the minxes, a little bit more planning in the minxes, because there's more faces on the minx, and so rather than just tossing it in the direction it wants to be, I, I go layer by layer. I go inside out. But four moves, if, if you look at, you hold the cube, hold the cube, hold the cube in your hands, look at the front of the face, the face of the, the front face, uh, as if it's a spreadsheet with rows and columns, and formula A is one row and one column, uh, and formula B is one row, the top row, and two columns. <clears throat> and then you just pick which, you, the, you select the piece that you want to move, and you apply the formula to that piece. Uh, quickly, dem quick demonstration before I start. Okay, uh, formula A, let's take my 5 by. Formula A moves a piece to the top. I usually use it for corners. So bottom row, right column, out, down, in, up. And it switched these two, also these two and these and these three. But we're only paying attention to what it does to the top layer. Because it's done, it's usually done in multiples of six. Now, I just twisted this corner. Let's pretend I want to keep it that way. And I continue doing formula A, rotating the top to preserve it. And when I get to multiple of six, the bot the, all the rest of the cube has not been touched. So at the top. And so I just twisted three corners. Now these three corners are in the correct place, they're, but they're twisted so that they, I don't want to move them. Formula B would move three, three pieces around. Uh, if you ever have three corners, if you if you have the cube solved and everything is in the in its correct place, but the corners are twisted, uh, if you have three corners twisted, they're all twisted in the same direction. If you have two corners twisted, they're twisted in opposite directions because a multiple of three twists, the mathematics of the cube keeps it stable. So, uh, if I wanted to move three pieces around. If I applied formula B to the corners, it's top row, outside columns, and so it, if I wanted, if I, the two columns that I use are the outside columns, then what what's going to happen is the three corners are going to move. So it's top row, and then for every other move that's horizontal, every other horizontal is reversed the one before it. So, so slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down, and we just moved three cubes around. Do it again. Up, up, down, down. And uh, this is a convenient way of looking at it to see what happens. So if I want, if I want this piece to go, these three pieces to move. Okay, and then that's going to happen. So if I, that's using the outside columns. If I use uh, an outside column and an inside column then such as, so I let's select this piece, an edge piece that I want to move. Top row, two columns. The two columns are going to be where it's going to land and where it begins. So top row, first column, second column. Away up, in, up, away down, in, down. And it moved these three pieces around. Up, up, down, down again, just those three pieces, and three one once more is going to get you back to solve, back to where you began. 
Okay, let's do that for these other ones as well. Um, these three pieces are in the correct place. They need to be twisted. Formula A does that. Out, down, and up. Out, down, and up. And if the rest of the keys. Okay, so this is where I want it to be. Slide the top to preserve that. Continue twisting with this one. Slide it to preserve it, and this one. When this one is active color to the top again, the rest of the corn cube will be back to where it was when I began. The formula 6 puts you back to, to your beginning state. Okay, so that's formula A, and then formula B, for like I said, for the corners, slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down, move three corners around. And then, like I said, it, so it's top row, outside columns, moves corners, top row, outside and inside, moves edges into inside pieces, uh, to insides, uh, columns, moves edge pieces around. And you don't have to remember which columns do what, you just focus on the pe one piece that you're trying to move. So I, I move it to the top, slide it into a different column, that's my second up is where it landed. Reverse, down, reverse, down, and set my top. So it looks like I, I moved two pieces. You never move two pieces, you always move three pieces. And the third, but two of them were orange so you couldn't tell. I, so again, I'm gonna line it up and up, slide to a different column, second up, reverse, down, reverse, down. So formula B will move corners or edges or centers and that's, <laughs> and A will twist them if they need to be and that's all you really need to do. If you apply formula A to the middle, if, if, if this is the column and this is the row, row and column that I'm using, out, down, in, up, then you get, that's how, that, that's how you can get, you, if someone picks up your cube and does boxes, that's how you, you resolve it. Um, again, so line up the corners, line up the three colors so that the, the ones that are going to move are top, front, and right. Slide out, down, in, up. So, um, so that's formula A, formula B. With it, you can solve all your all of your cubes. Parodies are a lie. You don't don't have to play with them. And so today, I was going to I was <laughs> I sure appreciate you guys coming back for me. I I abandoned you for a week while I went to go um, house sit for my for my son and his dog and his cat while he was out of town away from my setup and I haven't figured out how to use other things to duplicate my setup. <laughs> so, uh, it works on every size, com every complexity cube, every complexity minx. Uh, the, you'll notice that there's no parity algorithm, that's because parodies are a lie. If a parity is where it looks like there's two pieces and only two pieces that need to exchange, uh, do, 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 do. and it is always caused by the same thing, therefore it is always resolved by the same thing. It, it, the, the, <clears throat> the third piece that you do not see is the third piece that you do not see. It is the layer, the slice that is touching that parity is a quarter turn off. Make you, so make that quarter turn and then resolve your pieces and the parity went poof. Uh, if, you, if you've done your centers first, you have to reset your centers, but the other, but the parity has dissolved. So if you're doing your centers last, which it's the same amount of time whether you're doing it first or last. Uh, so I do the corners first uh, because not everything has an absolute center. So I do the corners first and then the corners dictate what color the face is going to be. And so I do, do the edges and the edges are there um, to, to, to keep me track of which columns I'm working on if I get confused. So... That's the cube. The minxes are done are done the same way. You just have to uh, adapt them in your brain. Uh, so 
uh, formula A would would then be uh, bottom row, right column. So I just I'm, I just I I, pre I just morph it into a square. So so out so um, these two pieces are going to switch. So I move this piece away, and this piece down, and this piece in, and this piece back up again, and this piece moved. These two switched again, and now it's twisted. Three and the edges are back the way they wanted. Four, five, six. Now, if you wanted to twist any of the corner, as soon as it looked as soon as it looked the way you wanted it to be, you'd you'd slide it away to preserve it, and continue with another corner that you don't mind twisting because <clears throat> because six is going to get you to get the rest of the cube from getting messed up, so you don't have to worry about messing things up. So that's formula A. Formula B. Uh, can be applied. Okay, can be applied depending on how big the cube is. Uh, if you do it on corners, it you have to you morph this into one face. So t top row and the outside columns here slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down, and we just move three cubes around. Same as with the the same as with the cube. <coughs> so these three pieces. Will will change if you if you're using the corners. <clears throat> if you have a large cube, large minks, um, the two column is still top one top row and two columns. Uh, if the if it, the two columns are on one side, the the two columns will either be on the same side of the of the center. Or one one of the your slices will be the center. If the one of the slices is the center, you're going to have ancillary movement. It's going to move more than just the three pieces that you're trying to move. But uh, if you stay, if you just have, if the two columns are not the center, it moves these edge pieces around. If it's an outside and an inside column, and it moved three edge pieces around. So formula B is only moving three pieces. The exception being is that if one of those is the center, then if, if, if one of the columns is the center column, uh, which would be, so if it was the outside row in the center column, we'd be working on this the, the star tip. If there's an inside row and an inside column, we're working on the star arms. So um, demonstrate up. Uh, second row up, down, down, to the top, and these three edges moved, these three star parts moved, star arms moved, um, but so did the other things as well. Now I can move these other things without moving the star, but I can't move the star parts without moving the other things. So that's why I always do the star parts first. Up, up, down. Down, so at the top, and then once more. So it's these three. These three are going to move. So we go up, up, down, down. All right. So that being the case. Good morning, you guys. Thanks for joining me. If you've just found me, I'm Sunshine. I created the ABQ method for solving Rubik's cubes. Uh, can be learned inside of two hours and works on every complexity cube, not just the three by three. So you don't have to learn more algorithms as you get to more and more complex cubes. Because the cube being more complex doesn't mean the solution has to be more complex. Uh, formula A, formula B solves them all. Uh, I have not tried have not tried it on shapeshifters. <laughs> sh shapeshifters are not my friend. Um, and I haven't tried it on the pyramid yet. I, I, I could solve the pyramid back in the 80s. I haven't had a pyramid uh, since I came up with this method. So, um, my, if anyone has any questions, I'll be happy to, to dive in and demonstrate and dialogue. Uh, otherwise, I was going to uh, play with my minxes today. Because my grandbaby got them out <laughs> yesterday. So, um... These are different manufacturers, but they're all done. They're all done the same way. This one, 
looks different, but it's the same setup. So because it looks different, I'm not going to make that part of my play today. Uh, so scramble. Um, again, I'm, I'm happy to switch, I'm happy to switch to whatever you want me, whatever the common, <laughs> uh, any, any, pro, any, uh, re requests to work on something different. I learned back in the 80s when the cube was young, uh, at the time I did not, <laughs> could not solve it on my own. And this was before the internet, so the way I learned was I bought this book at the corner uh, corner convenience store, memorized it, and became popular. <laughs> everyone had a cube, not everyone could solve it. Uh, <clears throat> if you could solve it, you were considered a genius. And... And then uh, this, the Rubik's cubes were clunky. It, speed solving was not a thing because you couldn't. J there was no finger tricks. There was no, um, and there was just no finger tricks. And, and then I then the first champion first first championship record first championship was held, and this guy won it, Jeffrey Veronsano. And. So this is his book that he wrote at the time. And, but, <coughs> but I thought I was hot stuff because I could solve a cube in about three minutes. Uh, always under five, usually about, sometimes about three was my best. And they said, hey, there's going to be a competition and it's going to be broadcast on da-da-da. And I'm like, oh, I didn't know about a competition. How come nobody asked, <laughs> nobody asked me? So I watched it for the first time and... Um, Every comp, every competitor was sub one, sub a minute, and I'm like, what? <laughs> and the final, the final world, re final, uh, well, it was world record at the time. It was a na national record because it wasn't worldwide yet. Um, it was 23.4 something seconds, if I remember right. I probably remember it wrong, but it was under, it was just over 20 seconds. And I looked at that, and I looked at my cube in my hand, <laughs> and hello. Ah, we have a first time chatter. So I looked at that and I was so dis I was so discouraged that I put my cube down. I didn't touch it for a month. <laughs> oh, I've just been raided. Hey, you guys, help every help everybody answer any questions that come up. Hi, you guys. Uh, if you've just joined me, I am Sunshine. Raider, yay! Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Uh, I am Sunshine. I'm the creator of the AB Cube method for solving your Rubik's Cube. That's it right there. Formula A is four moves. Formula B is eight moves. With that, you can solve every complexity of Rubik's Cube. Uh, and we, we, I teach all of them the exact same way. I teach all of them at the same time. So when you, we can learn inside of two hours. No cheat sheets. No, uh, no algorithms. Just four moves and then eight moves. For every, for every left, there's a right. For every up, there's a down. It's mathematical zero. It's a commutator. And it works on every every cube. It works on every minx. So, uh, if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to dive into that. I will be happy to demonstrate or dialogue. Uh, but it also works on every complexity uh, minx as well. So, uh, with just formula A, just formula B, you can solve the, the minxes or you can solve the cubes. The difference between the cube and the minx as far as the ABQ method goes can I do an example of a 3x3 three three solve with a method? I can. I can, I can, I can. I will be happy to. Alright. Now, when I, demo when I teach, I don't just teach the 3x3 the three three because I found that we humans have, a, have the ability to trick ourselves into thinking something is hard. So, uh, I started teaching the 3x3 three three and said, okay, now these things also apply to the 4x4. Four four. You don't have to do anything different. You just, and, they, the, and people was like, no, that looks harder. I'm not going to try. So I always just start, now when I'm teaching people, I start with either the 5x5 five five 
or all of them together. But I will do a three by three right now. So let's scramble it. Actually, before I scramble it, let me show you what it does. Okay, so formula A is going to, is, is four moves, one row, one column. If it's the middle row and the middle column, this is what happens. You get boxes. Okay. Uh, it is it is not a speed solving method. I uh, do please practice it and tell me how you do. Uh, but but what but what it does do is you can pick up any cube and put it down to solve. So if you're learning algorithms, it's easier to, to learn what the algorithm does if you can do it from a solved cube. Uh, so so formula A if it's, it does that. Formula A if it's bottom row right column does this. It twists the top corner and it brings the, switches these two around. So it's a good way to bring a piece to the top. And if done in multiples of six, nothing changes. Six, the bottom doesn't change. The only things that changed are the ones you wanted to change. Okay? And if you do, if you, if it, so if you, is, if you change which the two columns are, so it's uh, outside column, inside column, then what happens then is the edges get moved. Okay? And if you do two inside columns, then the centers move, like so. So it's the same movement, and you can do corners, edges, or centers with formula B. Formula A, if something's in the right place, but it needs to be twisted, that's what it'll do it. So let's twist my cube. You do 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 <laughs> Okay. Scramble, scramble, scramble. All right. Thank you for following me, and I appreciate that. That's awesome. Okay, so uh, um, most people back in the '80s, we started. We worked around the absolute center because the absolute center does not change, does not change in relation to itself. That be became non-essential when we went, when we graduated to the four by four and above. But if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So we always we kept working around the center. Uh, I changed that because I'm. Every cube I have, I can do the exact same way. So if I if my cube is a four by four, I can't work around the center because I don't know what the center is. So, but every cube, no matter it has it has the eight corners. So we're gonna do the corners first. The you your cube has eight corners. You select a corner. Your corner has three colors. You select a color. Uh, I teach with starting with yellow, but you can be color neutral with this. Uh, again, this is not for speed not speed solving, but Sometimes, but it can help because you can, like I said, you can do away with the, the parity. Parity's all gone. So um, I started color neutral, and my alpha tester said, "No, tell us what to do." So I start with yellow because all of my cubes have yellow, and it works conveniently on all of them. Not every cube is colored the same way. This one has purple, opposite orange. So, all right. So I start with yellow. Find a corner that has yellow on it, and I hold it in my hold the cube in my hand with that col that, that corner under my left thumb and on the top face, yeah, with the color on the top face. So this cube that I've selected, that you've selected, uh, is correct because <laughs> you're that powerful and we're gonna make the rest of the cube match it. So the first thing we're doing is we're looking at corners. So this one is correct, so I need to look and see if this one matches this one. Uh, so I, I look and see, does this cube have uh, yellow on it? And if it does, formula A, will bring the yellow from wherever it is to the top. If it's already on the top, then I just slide it out of the way to preserve it. So if there's a yellow here, anywhere, formula A will bring it to the top. But if there's not, then I look at the corner underneath it and is, ask if there's a yellow there. So if there's a yellow anywhere on either one of these two corners, formula A will bring it to the top. If there's not, rotate the bottom row until there is because there's going to, there's going to be a corner. So. There's a yellow in one of these spots, so I do formula A is bottom row, right column. So I go out, down, in, up. Uh, is it on top? Not yet. So I keep going. Keep going. And over and over until it comes to the top. When it comes to the top, I don't rotate the cube, but I just but I slide the top to preserve the piece that I've just got, yellow on top. And then I continue. So is there a yellow here? No. Is there a yellow here? No. So I rotate the bottom bottom by quarter turns till the answer is yes, and formula A will bring it to the top. Now again, this is not speed solving; it's not fewest moves, but it does. All you need is these two formulas. Yellow's on top, 
Now we're we're ignoring the rest. We're ignoring the rest of the cube. We're not looking at centers. We're not looking at edges. We're not like when we're not looking at other colors. We're only looking at corners. We're only looking at yellow. So yellow is on top. Slide it out of the way to preserve it. Continue with this one. Is there a yellow on top? I would love to have you practice this and then come back to me and tell me how. To, tell me, tell me how it works for you. So is there a yellow here or here? No. Rotate the bottom. Now there is. Formula A brings it to the top. So we're all, so once you've got, um, I'm in the process of setting one up. I don't yet, but I will. You're you're not the first person who's asked me, so I will I will get to that point. So yellow's on top on all four corners. Okay. At this point in time, one of three things will have occurred. Either all we look we now each corner has three colors. We're going to look at the other colors now. Either all of the corners will match each to each other, none of them will match, or one side will match. Okay, when you make one, I'll post. Okay. I would love to see speed solve. Um, do, it, do it on a 5 by though. Do it on a 5 by. <laughs> Alright, so yellow's on top. Uh, and either one side matches, all of them matches, or none of them match. So blue does not equal green. Orange does not equal blue, red equals red. So one side matches. It has to be one of those. Yeah. Okay. So it has to be one of those. If none of the sides match, it doesn't matter which way you hold it to do the next process. But if one side does match, you hold the cube so that it's facing away from you. Formula B then is one, t one row and two columns. How do you do the edges? Uh, same way, only it, it, okay, so the, for the corners, it's top, it's, it's top row and outside columns. For the edges, it's the top row and the outside and an inside column. So you pick the end piece you want to move, and the two columns are, uh, the first one is where that's going to land, and the second one is where it begins. So if I want to move this piece over here, slide, that's first up, that's second up, that's third down, first down, that's second down. And it moved three pieces and only three pieces. So uh, hold the matching side away from you, and you're doing formula B is top row outside columns slide up slide up slide down slide down and it looks like we messed it up but we didn't what we did is we moved three pieces around and we already know how to bring the yellow back to the top again because we know formula A now so out down in up until the yellow comes back to the top and when it is slide that out of the way keep the cube stable and continue with the next corner slide it out of the way and by the time your yellows are back to the top, you will progress to the next step. So if none of them matched, at this point in time, one side will match. If one side matches, at this point in time, all of them matches. Because what you did is you moved three corners around, which has the effect of switching these two. Because corners are easy. How do I get the correct edges? Okay. Uh, well, I did the yellow. Someone wanted to walk through, so I'm going to do the whites next. Uh, this one's already on top, so I'm going to start there. Hold your hold your question. I would get to it. So white's there. I need to bring. We have to. At this point, you have to know what's the opposite color to yellow. Okay, and it's the color that all four of the cubes have in common, and they're not all the same. So you do have to measure, have to look and see. But we've established that it's white. So I'm going to use formula B to bring the white to the top. It's formula A to bring the B, white to the top on all four edges. I don't have to look to see if it's here because we've already established that it is. So formula A until the white's on top. When it, when it is, I slide the slide the top to preserve it, but I don't rotate the cube. That preserves my bees. Now, we, we're abandoning the yellows because we're, they're going to move around while we're working with the whites, but as long as you don't rotate the cube, when your whites are on top, your bees will be back to the way they wanted to be. They're going to dance around, but they're going to not be changed because formula A and formula B does not affect the bottom part of the cube. So, whites on top, either one side, all of them or none of them match. So the matching side faces away, and it's slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down, and the bring white A to bring the whites back to the top. Again, we're abandoned. we're ignoring the yellows because if we look at them while we're working with the whites, we're going to think, oh no, I messed up. I got to start over again. No, you don't. You got to trust the yellows because the cute this method does not mess up the bottom at all. So the first four corners are still happy to each other. The second four corners are happy to each other. You just rotate the top until the top and bottom are correct. And now your corners are done. On a two by two, you'd be done. Um, for every other cube, I'm sorry, I can't leave this this way. Okay, edges. 
three edges. Okay. I'm gonna I'll answer your question with this right now. All right. So you find a piece that wants to move. You're gonna move, be moving three pieces. You line it up. The corners match the front, and it's going into the green direction. So these three pieces are going to move, and. Uh, so it's top row, first column is where it's going to land, second column is where it begins. So you go away, up, in, up, away, down, in, down. Okay, so my yellow, my yellow and white are now correct. To, my, my corners are correct to each other. I've been training my eyes to look for yellow and white, so I'm going to keep looking for yellow and white And I, as I progress to the edges. So the first thing I'm going to do, uh, now is a good time to muscle my, muscle my uh, centerpiece into place. But if I, if I did not do that before, and I want to do it now, but my centers are, I don't want to mess up my edges now. Just line it up so it's, so it's on the front, and it's going to go to the top. And then formula A with this row and this column. So out, down, in, up. We'll, we'll, uh, if, you, if you didn't do it now, then and you didn't want to mess up any of your edges, which for me it doesn't matter. But that's how to get it that way. So, so uh, yellow and white are left and right. I can set up, I can center my, that one too, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to be rotating the centers while I place the opposite edges. Okay, so, corners, corners are easy, how do I get correct edges? Oh yeah, okay, alright, so, yellow and white are left and right, I'm, my, my next step is do the edges, but I'm going to do them in stages, I'm going to do the opposite edges first. So, uh, I've got yellow and white holding left and right as dictated by the corners. And I find a piece, yellow or white in the middle that wants to move. So here it is right here. I found a piece in the middle that wants to move. I'm marking it with a sticky so you guys can follow my eyes. Okay, so this one, the corners match. I, I rotate the center until the corners match the front. Okay. And then I determine which direction it's going. So it's blue and white, so it's going in the white direction. So it will land above the blue and white in something corner, not above the blue and yellow something corner. So it's going this way. So the top row, two columns, the two columns are where it's going to land and where it begins. Start by moving it away. So away, first up, back, second up, away, down, back, down, and it is placed. Find another, and then keeping the cube stable, yellow and white are left and right. I find another, anytime there's yellow or white, I move it to the outside. So I'm bringing the corners to match the front, we treat the corners as one thing now. It's not going to the white side, it's going to the yellow side, so it's going this way. So the, to the left is B as written, to the right is the mirror of each of those movements. So it's going this way, so two columns are where it's going to land is the first column, and where it begins is the second column. So out, up, in, up, out, down, in, down, and that is placed. And we keep doing that for as long as there's a yellow or white somewhere in the middle. Uh, bring the corners to match the front, determine its direction, away, up, in, up, away, down, in, down. Okay, here's a white, but we want it to be on top, not the front. So I flip the cube, I keep yellow and white or left and right still, but the other direction doesn't matter as long as they're left and right. And then corners to match the front, determine its direction. Formula B, away, first up, back, second up, away, down, back, second down. Okay. Here's another yellow or white, and we keep doing this for as long as there's a yellow or white in the middle area. Um, on a 3x3, three three, there's fewer, but if you get to larger things, you just, just we're doing the yellow and white sides. So flip it so it colors on top, bring the corners to match the front, determine its direction, start by moving away. First up, second up, first down, second down. Okay, and we're just placing them one piece at a time. Corners to match the front. Determine its direction, so away, up, in, up, away, down, in, down. Okay, uh, this is not yellow or white, this is, so I'll place this one. Corners match the front, you're in this direction. Away, up, in, up, away, down, in, down. And we're just placing pieces one at a time. Lather, rinse, repeat, until there's no more yellow or white in the center. Corners match the front this direction, up, up, down, down. Uh, this is not yellow or white, this is not yellow or white, this is not yellow or white. So the yellow, no more yellow or in the middle. You say the edges confuse you. Am I still confusing you? Uh, 
Uh, is there a ZBLL for the ABQ method? Okay, um, I'm old. <laughs> I learned back in the 80s. I have not kept up on all of the terminology, so I do not know what ZBLL means. You need to translate for me. So yellow miter, the yellow, once there's no more yellow or white in the middle, we look, check the sides to see if they're correct. Now, most of the time they will be. To solve the last step in one algorithm, I only use formula A and formula B. But you can use any algorithm that you, that any favorite algorithm that you have. But, so, uh, this, however, does away with parodies. You will, you will never, you don't get par <laughs> Parody is a lie, okay? <laughs> the parody is a lie. You can play with them if you want to, but you don't have to. Uh, so now I check to see if they're right, and sometimes they, most of the time they will be, but sometimes something will be there flipped, or this one will be here, and this one will be here. If any of them are not correct, then I displace them by putting a, hello, commut, com, commutator, commutator, or Alex for your method. I want to know more about that. Okay, but so, so I, so if one of them was incorrect, I would displace, I would put a, garbage piece into that spot to move it out to the middle so I could work with it. So once my yellow and white are correct, white goes face down, because yellow is my favorite color. Actually not purple is my favorite color, but yellow is my favorite cube color. Okay, so we've done the opposite edge. We did the corners, we did the opposite edges. The next thing to do is to do the side edges. So white goes face down and we're looking at the sides. Find a piece that's incorrect. This one's incorrect, okay? And then we're going to displace a yellow piece into that so that this piece will come to the top and we can work on it. We've just established that formula B moves a piece from the top front to the side front. Okay, so if we want to work with this, we need to put it to the top. So we're going to displace this yellow into here, which will move this piece out where I can work on it with keeping my yellow face down. So slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down. Can I redo the yellow and white, please? <laughs> I can. Does everybody want me to do that right now, or do you want me to finish this pe this th this method first? Because I would love to. I I will help you. I can, I have another three by three. I can do it at the same time. All right. Let me. So white's on the bottom, and and the white edges then help me keep track of which columns I'm working on. So this is the piece that I'm going to work on. I'm looking. I'm ignoring all of the yellow now. I'm looking only at the one piece I'm going to place. Get, I will get to you in a minute. So holding the top, I rotate the entire cube until the corners match the front. We're looking at the bottom corners to match the front. So corners match the front. The top is going in the, the other color is green, so it's going in this direction. Uh, also, when it says redo the yellow and white, do you mean the yellow and white edges or the yellow and white corners or both? Okay, so I'm going to finish this while you answer that question. So the so, uh, first column is where it's going to land. Second column is, oh, okay, sure. Um, well, it's the same. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let me get what I'm going to do. Uh, here's something you want to know. Uh, if you, if when you're scrambling, you keep your corners together, then your corners, <laughs> your edges don't get scrambled. So I kept my corners together. So I'm going to do redo my yellow and white. Okay. So, uh, I'm sorry. I just scramble. It's easier to scramble it. <laughs> All right, let me get my corners done real quick so I can show you the edges. When none of them match, it's the first fit color um, shortcut. Now they all match. Okay, so. I hope I didn't mess that up. Did I? Okay, I guessed right. Okay. Okay, corners are done. Corners are done. Those corners now dictate what color each face is going to be. And I've been I've trained my eyes to look for the yellow and white, so I'm going to keep looking for the yellow and white. So I put yellow and white left and right. Okay. So I look for 
With yellow and white left and right is dictated by the corners, I'm looking for any piece in the middle, anything that's not the non edge piece, not a side column, that has a yellow or white on it. When I find one, I'm going to place it one piece at a time. Uh, I do it one piece at a time, even with larger cubes, I don't, I don't spend my time paring up the edges because that involves more looking than I need to look at. Uh, the pair, they'll, they'll pair each other, they'll, they will pair each self, pair themselves each. I know how to talk. <laughs> Hush. Okay, so here's a white or yellow, but I want the active color to be on the top, so I'm going to flip the cube. Yellow and white are still left and right. Okay. <clears throat> so this piece, line up the corners to match the front, determine its direction, so it's the white and or yellow and the orange and white is going to land above the orange and white corner, not above the orange and yellow corner. So it's going in this direction. So this is my first column. This is my second column. Out, up, in, up, out, down, in, down. And that is placed. It places one piece at a time. Okay. Here's one. But I want the active color to be on top. Yellow and white are left and right in either direction. Doesn't matter. Bring the corners to match the front. Determine its direction and start by moving away. First column is where it's going to land. Second column is where it begins. Every other move is horizontal. Every other horizontal is a reversal one before it, so you've got a lot of this action going on. Okay, so that one's there. This is not yellow or white. This is a yellow or white. Bringing the corners to match the front. Determine its direction. Start by moving away. Up, up, down, down. Okay. Uh, can I send a like to my a link probably to my solve in chat? Yes, you may. Corners match the front, it's going in this direction, slide up, up, down, down. Corners match the front, going in this direction, up, up, down, down. Yellow or white, flip it so colors on top, corners match the front, going in this direction, up, up, down. And you do this until there's no more yellow or whites. Okay. Regardless of regardless of whether you're doing this cube or this cube, you just do it until there's no more yellow or whites. Corners match the front. Corners match the front. Going in this direction. Slide up. Slide up. Slide down. Slide down. Okay. Yellow or white? No. Yellow or white? No. Yellow or white? No. Yellow or white? No. Okay. Now we assess. The, either the either the side edges are correct or they're not. So, <laughs> binary. The, the whites look happy to each other. They're, they're in between the, 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 the right corners. The yellow, however, uh, has one that's not right. Okay. Um, if, if you only have one that's not right, you can use that to advance to the next step, but I'm going to show you how to place it anyway. So, uh, this, so I'm going to displace it with a garbage piece so it's out in the middle where I can work with it. So I'm going to find a piece. I'm going to put this into where this yellow is, so the yellow will come out to the middle. Up, up, down, down, and now it's back here. Corners to match the front, and then that first is where it's going to land, second is where it begins. So up, up, down, down. Okay, and now no more yellows and the whites in the middle. Now I look. Okay. Uh, so the opposite edge, so the, so the corners are done, opposite edges are done. Uh, now I'm going to set my absolute center now before I, before I do any more work on the sides. Uh, if you can't, because it's an even number cube, don't worry about it. And so now, white, white goes face down, yellow is on top. And we, I've got the opposite edges done, now I'm doing the side edges. So I look for, I just find, look at the side edges and see if any, see if, if any of them are incorrect. This one's incorrect, so I'm going to displace. Remember how I displaced a piece to get the yellow out? White stays face down for the rest of the solve, for the cages. So I select a, select a yellow piece that I can displace. I'm going to put this piece here, and then th that will put this piece where I can work with it on the top. And, <coughs> and eventually, don't worry about your yellow, because eventually it'll find its way back to the top again. It will find its way back to the top either correctly or incorrectly. It doesn't matter if it's at the top face. As long as it's the top layer. Okay, so I, now I'm ignoring everything except for I only I only look at one piece at a time. I'm ignoring all of my yellow, so I'm looking for, for a piece on top on the yellow side that's not yellow, and that is the piece I'm going to be placing. So um, 
the I hold the top row and I move the entirety of the cube as I'm working here. So I need to bring the corners to match the front, uh, the bottom corners, because we're ignoring the top layer. We're ignoring everything on the top. So corners match the front, and I determine which it's going in the red direction, not the orange direction. So first column, second column, start by moving away. Up, up, down, down, and that's placed. And then I look at the piece that I just put to the back, bring the corners to match the front, determine its side direction, away, up, in, up, away, down, in, down, and we're just placing pieces one at a time. And now I look here, corners already match the front, it's going in this direction, slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down, and yellow came back to the top, so we assess. <laughs> and uh, sometimes yellow will come, so, you know, you can't get a parity on the 3x3, but you can get it on other ones. You can get a parity on the 3x3 void cube, and the reason why you can is because the center is invisible. If you pretend you can't, you don't, don't know what color the center is, you can get a void cube, a pair of, pair of, prob, blah, 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 blah. I can get a parity on a 3x3 three three if I have the center a quarter turn off. Because that's what every parity is caused by the center being a quarter turn off. So that's that's it. That's the three the three by three. Um, the uh, the I do not have a parity al an algorithm for the parity because parities are a lie. Hello, gosh, it's so nice to have you guys talking to me. <laughs> so who all do we have? How many people do we who all do we have? If you've just found me. I'm Sunshine. I created the AB cube method for solving Rubik's cubes. Uh, and formula A is four moves, formula B is eight moves. With it, you can solve every complexity Rubik's cube. You don't have to worry about parity algorithms. And it also works on every complexity minx as well. Uh, formula A brings a piece to the top and twists it around as needed. Formula B moves three pieces around. And that's all you need to do. If you have a parity, there your sun. If it looks like there's two pieces and only two pieces, I can get this corners in like five seconds, but don't understand edges. Okay, all right. Um, okay. Let me. Okay. For the corners, which piece do I want to use? Okay. For the corners was the top row and the outside columns. Okay. Formula B is the top row in two columns. But which two columns you're using deter is determined by which piece what by the piece that you want to move. So if I if this is the piece if this if, if I want to move this edge piece, then the two columns are it's always going to be the top row, but the two columns are going to be where I want it to land, which is either going to be here or here, and where it is now. So this is my second column, whichever way I'm going. Okay? So it's top row, two columns. <clears throat> but the first column is going to be where do I want it to land. So <clears throat> if I want it to land over here, then this is my first column and this is my second column. If I want it to land over here, then this is my first and this is my second column. So going to the left is B as written. You move it the top away first up. Can I do it on a 3x3? Three three? Okay. All right. Here, this is, here is a piece. This piece right here. I want to move this piece to either the, over here or over here. Okay, so I'm going to use the top row and two columns. Now, if I the, one of the columns, the second column is always going to be the, the, is is this piece. This piece, the piece that I want to move, has to be one of the two columns. So this is going to be my my column. This is going to be my second column. The first column is either going to be is going to be an outside column. It's either going to be here or here, depending on which way I want to move it. So do you want me to move this to the left or to the right? Or should I do both, one after the other? Right, please. Okay, I want to move it over to here. So the first thing, so the, so this piece is going to land over here. The this is my first column. This is my second column. But I don't. I so first thing to do is to move this piece away from where the action is going to take place, so I don't leave it, lose it. So this piece, I'm going to start by moving it away from the action, and then the first piece is where I want it to land. So I go up, and then I bring this back into the middle, and this is my second column up. And you can see this there. And then down and 
down. And let's just move this piece here. Uh, it, moved, it, it moved three pieces. It'll always move three pieces. Let's do it again. I, I know you get it, but I got to do it again to get my cue back. So, away up, in, up, away, down, in, down. And once more, you'll be able to see the, how it's working because this is the one that's going to put it into place. So, it wants to go here. Away, up, in, up, and I've just placed it. Away, down, in, down. Do you want me to go over? So, outside columns works on corners. Outside inside works on edges. Do you want me to go over the centers as well? Or do you have that down? And it's flipped. Okay, so are you saying that the piece is where it wants to be, but it's, but it's, uh, okay. Let me do this. All right, so... Are you saying that it's where it wants to be, but it, but it's not, but it's flipped, like that? <clears throat> okay, that's because you didn't bring, you didn't line up the corners to match the 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 the, the front first. Okay. Um. So if you didn't, so. Yeah. So you had you had it going in the right direction, but you didn't bring the, line up the corners to match the front color first. So now, what do we do, and how do we flip it? Okay, here's two. Here's two that need to flip. You cannot. You can only flip two at a time, uh, because you. you it's just mathematics of the cube. I don't understand. So, um, <clears throat> at the end, when you're using this method, sometimes you'll get two flipped. Uh, they'll usually be be flipped opposite each other because of the way I do my order of operations. But either way, if you have two that are flipped, uh, like I said, formula B always moves three pieces. And so you're going to be using three pieces. So the, one of them is obviously going to be this piece. One of them is obviously going to be this piece. This piece is going to be the third piece. And so what's going to happen is I'm going. This piece is going to come forward, and then it's going to with formula B. So I'm going to do formula B. I'm going to take an incorrect piece and move it into the incorrect piece. Okay. So away, up, in, up, out, down, in, down, and that moved the piece that, that wanted to flip here to the back. Bring it to the front. Corners match the front now, okay. So if I do it this way, it's going to land there in land there flipped because the corners have to match the front. So to be this this way, up, up, down, down, and I moved three pieces, but one of them just moved back to where it was. Did that make sense, or don't we do that again? <laughs> Still flipped. Okay. All right. But it's in the right place. Yes. All right. Uh, uh, we're working on yellow and white, so we don't. Your centers are your, the centers are not solved yet, so we don't care about those, right? Okay. All right. So I'm going to pretend. I'm going to do this twice. I'm going to do this once for this piece and once for this piece. Because I'm going to pretend that they don't care what the center is doing. Okay. So, this piece is, this piece, does it flip down the left or the right? Hey, you want me to hold it on the left or the right? You want me to flip it, the, flip the corner, the, the center on the left or the center on the right? Right. Okay. All right. So, all right. I don't care what the middle is doing. I'm going to ignore the middle. I'm just going to take a garbage piece and put it into this spot, okay, so that this will come out to where I can work on it. So, slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down, and so now it's out in the middle again, okay. Uh, if you're we're working with yellow and white, if your yellow is on the front instead of the top, that's what it was, your yellow is on the front. Flip the cube, I'm sorry, you have to flip the cube so that your yellow is on top instead of on the right. Because if your color, if your color's on the front instead of the top, it's going to it's going to into the right place, but it's going to go and flipped. See, so if I so it's orange and yellow, it's going to the orange and yellow spot. But if I put it in there right now with the yellow on the front, it's going to be flipped. 
So flip, hold your flip to your cube so that so that that piece now has the yellow on top, and yellow and white are left and right still, but you have to move have their corners match the front. Okay, you got it. Good, 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 good. So the corners have to match the front. If it's this way, it will end it. It will end incorrectly, and that's okay. You can do that. You can place it is where you can place it incorrectly, and get, to get once you get all the pieces in the correct place, then you can just go through a flipping pattern. Oh, you're <laughs> you're welcome. You're so welcome. Uh, what's the next thing I should demonstrate? I would love it. Now I I I. <laughs> I'm also asking permission. If you do a video of my method, can I uh, link to your? Can I link on my website, on my YouTube channel? To, like, I want to create a, a playlist of third-party reviews. So, uh, if you make a video of my method, I would love to be able to uh, post it on my YouTube, or and or my abcube.how page. All right, so. Uh, corner, or, yeah, yellow and white are left and right. Okay, so, okay, so corners match the front, it's going in this direction, up, up, down, down, okay, any yellow or whites in the middle, no, so I check, and this one is in, this one is flipped, okay, so I'm going I can go like this and then flip these two. I can set it, but if I don't want to set it, uh, Formula B always flips. Uh, formula B, okay, if you do Formula B, top, top, Formula B, top, top, uh, that flips these two pieces, okay? And so I can either line it up so these are the two pieces I want to flip and then put it back, or I can flip these two and then these two. So let me do that. I'm going to flip these two. So slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down top top to bring it to the front and then be again up up down down top top okay so that flip these two now I have these two that flip okay so it's the these these are the three pieces that I'm using okay and this piece is going to come up to here and I move forward okay and then yes I did I created this method <laughs> Top, top. I did. I created this method, uh, and you can find it. It is it is mentioned on speedsolving.com, and it's also mentioned on. If you go to Wikipedia and look for the professor's cube, which is what the five x five was initially called, this method is also listed as one of the as a direct solve for solving the five x five, as well. So it's on Wikipedia as well. Uh, I did create the method. Uh, how I created it was I was trying to figure out how to do, I had a five by five. <laughs> I was trying to figure out how to do the centers, how to get the centers done, <laughs> because I couldn't figure it out. And so um, well, there's, there's, it, there's, a, there's a couple steps that had to come together in my brain and click in order for this method to be born. Um, one was the, the, the parity. I had to figure out the parity algorithm. Um, you can make Alex for this method. Uh, yes, yes, you can. Uh, I, you are welcome to do so. But the, but the thing is, is that because I only have two arrows, I can use it to work on any any complexity cube at the same time. And so instead of I, instead of instead of saying that, that you use the uh, left and the what is this uh, v, eight B for vertical. Can I get a sponsor from the A? What is that? Tell me what that means. Also, do any of you guys are any of you guys like really good at web at, at web design or are you familiar with Wix? How Wix web design works? <laughs> Because let me tell you my woes. Oh, someone else followed me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the follow. Sponsor me. Oh, oh, you want me to? <laughs> I, <laughs> um, ask me again after I've gotten my, my book printed or I've started making money from merch. Because right now I'm just kind of um, limping along. I... I <laughs> 
I, I'm a senior, I'm a disabled senior and I don't I'm living on a fixed income right now. So I do not plan for that to be the be the rest of my life. I have a, I, I have this book ready to go. I was published. It's in a manuscript. It's not published yet. I'm looking for an agent. I would love to be published for a free hoodie. I am I'm in the process of getting of starting to get some merch. Um, I would I would love I would love that. I would do that. Yes. Yes, once I get the once I get merchandise going, I would love that. Um, some of the merch I'm thinking of doing, if you look, I don't know if you can see. I want to get some merch made with my logo. My logo is this. Form, it's two Formula A's on a five by five. Which gives you a nice little pretty flower pattern. Okay, so I want merch with my logo. I want merch with my, oh, let me show you. Let me show you. I'm just, one second. I am lucky that you chose me. I would love to. I would love to. Once I get, once I get some money coming in, yes, absolutely. So, um, some of the merchandise would just be the the Formula A and Formula B in a pretty prettier style, uh, prettier style. And then um, I was thinking like I could, it could have. I want to. I want. It on, I want a hats, but not the not the cheapo hats. I want corduroy hats, right? And um, I'm gonna get. I have some stickers. Uh, this is just for position only stickers. I'm gonna hand them out when I go to conventions and stuff But instead of this this is the typical icon here. It'll be the formula the either the formulas or uh, this pattern So um, stickers I'm gonna have I want I want you know, I want uh, I thought it would be funny to have a t-shirt With the a and B method upside down so that you can as you're solving the cube and just look at them look at the so you can look at it as you're solving the cube and see it. I also want to come up with keychains so that they keep, because it's once you've once you've learned the method, it's that's that's all you need to know. And so I want to have like keychains. This is a simplified version of CFOP. I think is this is this CFOP? Or is this uh, F2L? Okay. Um, Okay, so yeah, I want to. I want to what what kind of merchandise I'm gonna get. This is CFOP. <laughs> I hope it's simplified over this, because <laughs> this is a lot. So I want to. I want. I want to get keychains because you know how they have the little keychain Rubik's cubes. I want to. I think I want to be able to put a little keychain with this so you can have it and solve it. I just think that'd be fun. Um, so. Not sure what all merch I'm going to come up with, but I'm I'm working that in my brain as we speak. <laughs> um, yes, so I so I'm I'm looking for an agent so I can get my book actually physically published. I'm old and I want to have it in my hand. Yes, I would be happy to do that once I have, once I get more of my brand going, brand recognition going. Send me a, send me a message. My uh, you can send me a message at uh, abcube.hal at gmail.com. That would be fun. Um, yeah. So I I've never been to a competition yet, but I want to. Oh, you just did it! Yay! Yay! Now the thing is is it and it works on this too. And the thing is. Um, you can you can get faster. I mean, if if you do if you learn the inverses of a and b, uh, which I, I I know the inverse of a, but I've never learned the inverse of b because it, it's it for me. Uh, my brain doesn't like clockwise and counterclockwise, so I look at the cube. But by the time I figured out whether I need to, whether I should use a clockwise method or a counterclockwise, back when I was using algorithms, this is just. Uh, if it's not one, it's two. 
three gets you back to start. So uh, I just look at it, I know need formula B, and then be, instead of spending time going, wait, do I go clockwise or counterclockwise, I just do it once, and if, it, if that solved it, it's fine. If not, when I'm sponsored, do I have, no. No. No, but you're bringing, but, but when you have people come to you and say, I can't learn, I just want, just tell me the secret. I don't want to spend months learning and the cheat sheets are too complicated and I just don't understand. Just tell me, what's the secret? This is that. This is the secret. So you can, yes, as long as you reference me and where they can find me. For the non-cubers who want to learn what to do, this is that. But no, you don't have to use this method. But, uh, yeah, uh, and I, this is, I mean, I love teaching this. I love because uh, I love the look on someone's face when they start off with, you know, oh, wow, that, that's just, I mean, <laughs> I had a little seven, eight-year-old kid come up to me. I had my seven by in my hand, right, because that's my main. I will get, I will that you're motivating me to, to, to work on my merch. I also I also but my I also have another a task that I need to do is that when I created this I didn't really when I well created the method I was I have yeah, I've got here's there's different uh, different iterations of the ABQ method back when it was when it was on pencil and paper <laughs> but uh, yeah yeah. Send me a send me a message. Send me a message. Um, so he came up to me because he was I had the seven by and it was scrambled and he came up to me and he said, "Excuse me, a br cube brand. Um, you know what? Um, I would love to partner with 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 some cube makers, and I would love to partner with AB with uh, the cubicle." And, um, but mostly I would love to partner with GoCube. Okay, uh, here's the thing. GoCube, it, it, it's, yeah, it times you, it, but it also teaches you. It teaches you the beginner's method. Um, what I want, I want, I want to partner with whoever is going to be the first one to do a, a Bluetooth 555 instead of a 3x3. And I want them, I want the tutorial on it to be the ABQ method so that they can learn my method. <laughs> I buy from the cubicle. I do not know them person, no, know any uh, flesh and blood person attached to it. But that's where I buy from it. Yes, yeah. Uh, once I, once I start making money, I'll be happy to I'll be happy to sponsor you. Yeah, I buy my I buy my stuff from the cubicle. So I want to. But here's here's my tale of woe. <laughs> uh, when, once I had it, once I had it, the method perfected, then I had to put it into concrete form. I, I tried to get an agent, and they said, "Well, who are you that anyone would be looking for you to buy your book? Who, what what makes? Why are you the right person to write this book?" And I so I said, "Well." <laughs> <laughs> it works. <laughs> it's new. It's easy. <laughs> so, um, so I put it up online on the on the cubicle, and then I, I mentioned it on uh, speedsolve.com and Wikipedia, blah 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 blah. And so, um, but when I was doing that, I'm not a web designer, and so uh, I just each step on on the Wix, my Wix website, each step I put in as a vlog, and so like there so so it, it I don't just take this cube and oh thank you I don't just take a, a, a scramble and go all the way through it I take I have all five cubes all four cubes and I say this is how you do bring yellow to the top this is how on this cube and this cube and this cube and this cube so the more I'm doing it I will check you out thank you held a message for oh okay there's a message being held and it's you, so I'm going to allow it. Yes. Okay. So, so I put it there. Each, and so each step has its own. Each each step has its own video. 
I will check it out. Each step has its own video. And so, uh, and so I did each step as a vlog, which was, it worked. It's like the dancing bears. It may not be good, but it, it's, it works. But uh, the thing is, is that they automatically order that by the last, by last amended, last edited. And so it's hard for me to get it into a, a pretty and convenient index page. So what I want to do, I just want to copy and paste them into a album so that I can have them or organized. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. So I can have it organized. So if anyone knows how, how to just copy and paste on Wix, <laughs> I've had the devil of a time trying to, my executive, dysfun my executive dysfunction has kept me from doing it. All right. That, this has been fun, you guys. Uh, thank you for joining me. Thank you for chatting with me. And I will be back tomorrow. I'm here most days. Uh, I've been off for a week because I was house sitting, but I'm here, <laughs> and I love, <laughs> I love to meet other cubers because we are just the best community in the world. So, go have a good day. Be nice to yourself. Drink lots of water and have fun. And I'll be back tomorrow. Underrated stream. Bye, you guys. Follow me if you have, if you don't already. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye.